So we just received a call about a raccoon on somebody's back patio and it's foaming at the mouth and hissing at the complainant. Nice meeting you. You found him out in the street? He almost got hit, he was in the middle of the street. Oh, good job, appreciate yeah, no, you guys getting him. Okay, gotta be quick sometimes. <laughs> oh, I see it, I see it. I'm Sergeant Chase Cook, and I've been an animal control officer for going on about 14 and a half years. I placed myself 10-8 APSON, 1051 activity 4245. This has been an amazing career path for me. I started out working at a private veterinarian in the past, which is a great experience, getting some hands-on with animals. And several years ago, I got a promotion. Now I'm our field training sergeant in charge of our, our training and development for our shelter. I always loved animals, and I love people too. So it gives me an opportunity to teach people about our job and, um, and really help the citizens and animals of Palm Beach County. So we were dispatched to a um, call about a dog that a uh, citizen found. And it's over in Lake Worth. Looks like she found a little chihuahua with a blue collar. And we don't know who the dog belongs to. Like I said, our main goal is to try to reunite this dog with its owner. We try to avoid bringing any, any animals back to our shelter if we don't have to, you know, unless there's exigent circumstances. Um, we're going to see if we can get this dog reunited. Animal control historically can have uh, an, has a negative view from the public. Not everybody, but from what I've seen, a lot of folks I talk to, um, they kind of would view an animal control officer as a dog catcher. And uh, way back in the old days, that's the primary goal of an animal control officer would be to capture stray animals. Now, that over the years, that has drastically changed. Our job has really branched into a public service, um, you know, aid and and more like a similar to a police officer, which would be enforcing animal ordinances and laws. And, um, you know, we really strive to educate the people of Palm Beach County, our citizens, about animal welfare and make a positive image for animal care and control. We're coming up on the area. The house is going to be right across the street. We're going to park over here. So we're going to make contact with this woman. We're going to see uh, where she found this dog. and. Uh, like I said, we're gonna take a look at it. We're gonna see if it has any identification, see if it has a microchip. It, it probably is owned by one of the neighbors around here. Maybe just slipped out of the gate. Never jump to conclusions. Um, accidents happen, dogs get loose. And um, you know we can talk to the owner if we find them and let them know that a dog can't be roaming about. Maybe we can give them some suggestions on how to keep their dog confined for its safety. And uh, we'll go from there. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? doing <laughs> yep, yep. No worries, no worries. Uh, do you have a leash on I got a leash on me, so. He has a collar. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. Inside, inside, inside. Here, I'll try. I'm gonna flip this around him. Here, just hold him in that corner, stay. All right, I'm gonna try to slip out of here. Okay. All right, pal, come on. Here we go. All right. So our main goal is to get him back reunited with his with his owner. Um, so uh, we'll see what we can do for him. But he's a little scared right now, but I think he'll be just fine. So if you happen to find out who he belongs to, just give us a call and okay. then we can link the information and, and call them and they can come and re redeem their dog. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. You're I very really welcome. OK, it's nice meeting you. Have a great one. All right. You too. Yeah. This dog is really scared. It it may not be used to being walked on a leash, so I'm just going to try to spend a little time with it. And uh, you see, a dog like this is not aggressive or mean whatsoever. He's just really scared. He's frightened. He's not used to me. So um, it's going to pay for me to take a little time and see if he'll warm up to me before I can pick him up. Okay, we're going to get a little towel on you to make you feel a little bit more comfortable. You're going to feel a little bit more comfortable with this towel on you, maybe. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Okay. He won't let me pick him up, so I'm gonna go to plan B, because we don't want to injure him or anything, get him onto the truck, but we do have to lift him up. 
So I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Come on, pal. It's okay. Shh, shh, shh. Come on. Come on, buddy. It's okay, honey. It's okay. Okay, you're okay. Ta-da! Like I said, he's super scared. He doesn't know what's going on. He went for a little walk this morning, and now some big scary dude with a beard is picking him up. So this is a nice, nice little carrier right here, so he's gonna be safe in there for us to transport him, and we can get him back with his owner. All right, pal. Good deal. So what I'm gonna do now is make an identification number uh, for this dog. So once I make an ID or an animal ID number, it goes into our system and shows it as an active animal. Um, then we kennel it in, so it shows that um, it's one of the animals that are gonna, gonna be at the shelter if we ended up taking it back, if, if we can't find an owner uh, and return it to the owner. You know, this database has an inventory of all the animals in our shelter. It keeps track of all the logistics, where our officers are at, and everything. So once we create that animal ID number and kennel it in, it's gonna put on our internet website, Snap, and uh, surf the net about a pet. And it's our lost and found section. So if anybody is looking for this dog, they can simply go on our internet website, and there's gonna be a color photograph of it with its identification number. Um, and we can all do that remotely in the field. I'm gonna take a photograph of the dog and link it to our system. So within minutes, it's gonna show active. So if somebody's looking for this dog, they're gonna be able to identify it, have its animal ID number, have our contact information, and we can get the process going on how they can come redeem their dog from our shelter, or maybe we can meet up in the field here and uh, I can get their dog back to them before it ever even reaches our shelter. So we just received a call about a raccoon on somebody's back patio. It says it has a problem walking and it's foaming at the mouth and hissing at the complainant. So for animal control, typically we don't respond to the general wildlife nuisance calls unless it's an imminent public safety threat. But when it comes to certain animals like a raccoon, which is our number one rabies vector, meaning they do often carry the rabies virus, if they're showing any neurologic signs, um, then we, we send an officer out to address that, to impound the animal. You know, if it did have exposure to a person or another domestic animal, we would have to send it off for rabies testing as well. So we're going to get to this call. We're going to assess this raccoon, see what's going on with it, see if we can capture it, and we'll go from there. The destination is on your left. Arrived. We pulled up and the folks that called us said the raccoon wasn't there anymore, but it's acting really sick. Um, the last person to see it was this person in this house. I don't think they're home right now, but they said it was coming back through their yard and back towards the lake over here. So we're just gonna check the area to see if we can spot the raccoon and um, yeah, see if we can get eyes on it and capture it. Raccoons will typically follow uh, the borders of homes near hedgerows in heavily uh, wooded areas like this. So they can be very camouflaged as well, so they're kind of hard to find sometimes. Um, in this case, we may not find this raccoon, but he's probably not going to leave the area, especially if he's sick. Somebody's probably going to see him again. Give us a call back and we can have somebody respond out here as quick as we can. Needle in a haystack, you're, you're probably not going to find him. We couldn't find the raccoon. It's probably around in the area, but there's a lot of heavy uh, vegetation here. It's probably hiding in there. So hopefully one of the citizens, if they see the raccoon again, if it's still hanging around, they're going to give us a call. And I'm going to let uh, the security office here know, and I'm going to give them one of my cards with our uh, case number on it so they can reference and get somebody back out here as soon as they can.
So some of the equipment that animal control uses that you've probably commonly seen before is a catch pole. We also call this a control pole. And this is to deal with animals that are fractious or potentially hazardous to us, whether it's a dog or a raccoon or something that we can't actually touch. So you can see it's, it's, a, it's an aluminum pole with a, a rubber or plastic guard on the end and an adjustable loop on the end to where we can actually adjust like this around the animal's neck. And that keeps the animal a safe distance from us when we're handling it. These are called cat tongs, and um, it's similar it's device to pick up smaller animals like a, a cat or a raccoon or a possum that we don't want to physically handle. And it uh, has a, a spring-loaded mechanism in here to where I can actually reach out and I can grab the back of an animal like this, and I can actually pick them up just like this and place them into a, a carrier. So it keeps us a good safe distance away from the, the claws and the teeth of that animal. So this is just a large capture net. You can see this one has a bunch of holes and I've been using this for a couple years now that I've had to repair, but it's hard to beat a large net when you're trying to capture a really flighty animal that you can't capture any other way. A net is the way to do it. Sometimes it's difficult getting an animal untangled from it once you do capture it, but it sure is the easiest tool to use. Same as just like a big old landing net for fishing. It's telescopic. These are leather bite gloves that we have. Here's just one of them, but you can see they're pretty thick leather. They have a guard over the top of the fingers, and they have, uh, and they have an, uh, protection all the way up your forearm here. So if I'm handling something like that, it'll keep them from scratching or biting me right there. And that's pretty heavy leather, so it's, it's really difficult for any animal's teeth to penetrate that. The only problem with these is it reduces your mobility a little bit, but it does protect you. So this is one of our little small electronic uh, pocket scanners. This doesn't look like much, but that's one of the most important tools that an animal control officer can have. Every animal that we impound out in the field, we scan for a microchip. The vast majority of animals nowadays, um, especially if they're spayed or neutered, are microchipped. And with that microchip information has the pet owner's name, their phone number, and their address. If they register it, and that's gonna give me the number which I can run on my database and I can find out where a lost animal belongs so I can uh, return it to the owner out in the field. Very, very important device. Be sure to have your microchips registered. So we also have some more specialty equipment that we don't use on a regular uh, daily basis. These are our chemical immobilization projectors. We have one for long range and we also have one here for short range. Now what these do is fire a dart with a mobilizing drug inside. So if we have an animal that we cannot capture with traditional methods, whether it's a net or uh, with a, one of the control poles or just by hand, and it's a public safety issue or it's very sick and, uh, and we're trapping for it, it won't go in a trap, then we resort to some of the chemical mobilization device. So uh, we've had great success with that, but it's not something that we use on a regular daily basis, but we do have access to that equipment if we need to. So we were just dispatched to a call from uh, a mobile home park. It says here that they found a medium-sized shaggy blonde dog and it's confined in their office. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, See if we can get this dog and check it for a microchip, check it for any identification, and uh, see if somebody's missing the dog. Howdy. You found him out in the street? Yeah, as far as we, he almost got hit. He was in the middle of the street. Oh, good job. Appreciate yeah, no, you guys two, getting him. Two bystanders and Donnie, yeah. they, they pushed him into the gate area and they, they corralled him. Fantastic. Right. We'll take a look. Thank okay. you. Hey, how you doing? I'm Sergeant Cook with Animal Control. Yeah. Oh, look at this! What are you? Out in the middle of the street. Whoa. Hey. No, oh, are you okay? Are you are you okay? Whoa. Hi. Hey, you were sleep. You were in a deep sleep, weren't you? Hey, friend. Come here. Come here. Hey. Come on. Let's take a look at you. We're gonna check you for a microchip. You don't have a microchip. Are you a boy or a girl? As I couldn't tell. 
let's see. I think it's a, it is a girl. It's a little girl. Cute. Yeah, she's definitely older. It looks like she might have a little, maybe a little bit of cataracts or something, a little hard time seeing. So basically we're gonna case her in and I'll make an identification number for her. We're gonna take a picture and uh, we'll put it on our website to see if anybody's looking for her. I'm sure she's, she's probably owned by somebody pretty close by here. She probably wa didn't wander too far. Well, no, you guys saved her life for sure. She would definitely get hit by a car out here, so good deal. But uh, we'll see if we can find out who she belongs to. Great. All right, thank you so much. I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture of this dog right off the bat so we can get a good picture to put on our website. Okay, pal. Stay there. Oh, you're gonna, you're probably gonna bite. You're gonna bite. So the dog's a little scared to be picked up. And uh, it's an older dog. And a lot of times older dogs will have joint issues. And uh, it may not be picked up a lot by whoever it's owned by. So when I'm trying to pick it up, it's trying to bite at me. Not because it's mean, it's just, it's just a defense mechanism that the dog have. So I'm gonna put one of these heavy leather gloves on to help protect me just in case it wants to nip at me when I lift it up. Okay, there you are. Woo! Gotta be quick sometimes. <laughs> so Palm Beach County is huge and our officers are expected to cover the entire area from uh, Tequesta in Jupiter all the way down to South Boca uh, at the Hillsborough Canal and all the way west out to our western community, which is Bell Glade, Pahokee, South Bay, around Lake Okeechobee. So as a road patrol, you might cover 100, up to 150 miles a day in travels. So when the officer comes in the morning, they have a, a schedule and they give a certain zone that they're gonna work for that day and they're gonna take care of calls in that northern area or, or each zone. But depending on what emergency calls are happening, that officer might be have, have to come out of that zone and, and go into another area. So they might be going back and forth covering, you know, like I said, up to 150 miles a day. So we just got a call that came in. It says here that the, uh, the caller is a person's caseworker at a assisted living facility. And the person um, was transported to the hospital and her little dog is left behind there. So uh, looks like here there's nobody to care for the dog right now and, and uh, they don't allow dogs in the hospital. So we don't know how long she's gonna be in there, but our job is to pick up the dog and uh, we're gonna hold on to it. It's called a special hold. Okay, girl, come here. Come on over here. Hey, come here. It's okay. Come here. Good girl. All right, so she's got her vaccine tag, her personal ID tag, she's got everything on there. All right, sweetie, hold on, hold on. Okay, so we're gonna lift you up. Ready, Oh. Okay, good girl. You okay? She's gonna be just fine, yeah. So this individual was uh, transported to another area and um, there was no, nobody here for the, for the moment to take care of her dog. So that's a service that we provide for folks that are removed from, from their home or displaced momentarily and um, they're taken to uh, a hospital or, or jail or whatever the case, um, we hold the dog for a five day uh, period and we let the person know wherever they were taken to that we have custody of their dog and it's gonna be fine. We, you know, we set the dog up at our, at our shelter and um, we end up sending them a consent form. So it gives them an opportunity to either redeem their dog or give permission for somebody else, let's say a friend or a family member, to come pick up their dog on their behalf because we can't hold on, on to their dog forever, so they have that certain time period. And if they don't have any other options for the, for the dog, they do have a choice to surrender it to us so we can uh, adopt the dog or whatever the case because it, it gives us custody of the dog. But that's our last option. Our main goal here is to get this dog back to the owner as quick as we possibly can. So hopefully it pans out for this dog. So we just pulled back to the shelter. We're gonna go ahead and case the impounds in into the shelter. We're gonna take them from the truck and put them into different holding areas, uh, depending on their, their size and their demeanor. Back at animal control here, they're gonna be assessed by our kennel staff and our vet staff. And uh, we'll get them set up with some food and some water and some nice bedding. 
and they got a nice air conditioned area in there, so it's going to be good for them. We're going to go ahead and pull our database back up and uh, update the, uh, the information and whatever kennel the dog's going in here, we're going to put on, on our systems where when we look at our inventory, we can see exactly where this dog is at in our inventory, in our shelter, uh, just for tracking purposes. And we're going to uh, create a kennel card for it, which is going to follow the dog around wherever it goes, where it's going to be in an intermediate holding area here first until our uh, vet staff takes a look at it, make sure the dog's you know, uh, stable, uh, its health is good and everything before it gets moved out to uh, another uh, kennel in the back. And then that kennel card will follow it back there with its information on it. I'm going to put you in the, in the master suite over here. Come on. Come on inside. Good girl. Good girl. There you go. There you go. Stay. Good dog. All right, sweetie. So we had one of the citizens call in a complaint, and they said there's a black pit bull on the sidewalk next to their building in here and they've seen it for several days wandering around by some dumpsters and uh, apparently the dog growled it at the person too so it bumped up our priority a little bit if an animal's uh, potentially threatening to the neighborhood we're going to try to get somebody out there as soon as we can just to avoid any uh, any problems here so we're going to go ahead and patrol the community and see if uh, see if we can find this dog so there's a few different ways that folks can file complaints with our agency. Um, the number one way is you can call us. Our dispatch number is 561-233-1200, extension zero, and that gets you right through to a dispatcher. Um, our dispatchers are amazing. They can tell you um, basically a lot about our different ordinances in Palm Beach County. And uh, if it's something that we would handle or if another agency like uh, code enforcement or the sheriff's department or the health department might be able to handle. But they're there for, for the citizens to answer any questions that you have. Um, we also have a mechanism through our, our website. You can just go on to um, Palm Beach County government website and you'll see the link for animal care and control. And you can file a complaint right online. I encourage everybody to go onto our internet website, look at our, our county ordinance, which is 98 through 22 and that covers all the animal code. And uh, just read through it, it's a really interesting read. You can see how animals are regulated in Palm Beach County, whether it's rabies vaccinations and license tags, all the way to the welfare, um, how animals are to be kept when, when housed outdoors, to our tethering law, um, to animal to human bites and quarantining and such. So it's really interesting, read through it. If you have any questions for us, feel free to give us a call. And uh, we're there to assist the, the citizens of Palm Beach County and the animals as well. That's the gate where the gate where you can't actually come in through, right? It's like blocked off. Okay, cool. Okay. All right, I'm gonna. Oh, I see it. I see it. Okay, I'll call you back. Or no, hold on. No, 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 no never mind. It was a neighbor walking a dog. It just poked its head out. Uh, no, I don't see it. Uh, so our complainant just called. He said his uh, he left the area, but his mom was just here a few minutes ago, and she just saw the dog. Um, apparently, it hangs. It hangs out just past this stop sign. There's a, a dead end street over here near a gate. So she just saw it just a few minutes ago. So hopefully we're going to go over and do a foot patrol over there and see if it's still hanging out in the area. Let's take a walk. Let's see, it could be living back in these weeds. Nothing there.
How you doing? I got a question. You live in here? Have you seen a large, like a, a kind of like a dog like yours, but black, darker, loose in this area? We had a couple people call. It says it's been about a week about a dog's been hanging around in this area, like a large black dog. Haven't seen him? Okay, cool. Thank you. Some dog tracks. All right, so we weren't able to find the dog. We talked to a couple citizens. Uh, one guy said he saw the dog wandering on around a couple days ago, but he thinks it has an owner, and it looks like it recently had puppies. So we don't know who the dog belongs to. He wasn't sure which apartment it was. So we let the complainant who originally called us know if they see the dog again, just give us a call back. Hopefully we can get out here quick enough to spot it. Um, if it does have an owner, we'd like to talk with those people and uh, make sure that uh, we can educate them on keeping their dog in their home or keeping it on a leash and uh, you know making sure that it's especially not roaming if it's unsterilized because then you're asking to have an unwanted litter of puppies so we know that's not necessarily a good thing so hopefully we can um, you know if the dog continues to roam we can get back out here and either capture it or find the owner and educate them As an animal control officer, I tell people, you have to be a jack of all trades. You know, community service, public services is number one. You have to be compassionate for people and animals. You might be a first responder on a, on a vehicle accident out here. I've, I can't tell you how many times I've, you know, been on, on scene where a, there's been a, a car crash and I had to kind of secure the scene. You know, we do work for public safety, so, so that's our utmost priority. Um, Sometimes you're dealing with irate people out in the field and possibly threatening situations. Um, but some people are really happy to see us. They're calling us for service or that we're there to rescue an animal. Um, you know, it's, it, it can be any type of different thing, whether we're protecting the citizens of Palm Beach County from an animal or protecting that animal from the citizens of Palm Beach County too because there, there is animal cruelty and we have to deal with that as well. Well, that's the end of our shift. I hope you guys really enjoyed our ride along today and hope you learned something. And don't hesitate to give us a call if you guys have any questions. Thanks so much.